Tyrod Taylor was was an athlete that people were kind of expecting him to take a leap this year and to see what he was able to do on, on Saturday. How much of a conscious boost can that be for him to start the year off the way he did? Yeah, you know, Rock's a guy that's been a part of our program. Um, that even last year, he even wondered, hey, what's my role looking like? You know. Um, within the mix of a bunch of guys that were catching footballs. And, you know, and when Rock really, you know, this past spring, I, I knew he was going to have a special season. You know, he works really hard. He cares about it. You know, he cares about this university. And, and it's exciting to see him be able to get those catches in the first game, right? Because so much of that is confidence, right? A guy like a Demir Blankumsey had had success at Toledo and comes here, and we knew he'd have success. But a guy like Rock Taylor hasn't been able to show it game in and game out for him to be able to start the first game like that. It's huge for his confidence and we're expecting great things from him the rest of the season. Brian, we did see a lot of the vertical <coughs> passing game. You were successful with short passes, bubble screens, and the running game. Were you guys holding some stuff back uh, or what was the reason why there wasn't as much downfield passing? Yeah, a lot of it, it dictates what they're going to give to you. If they're going to play top down on some of that stuff, um, we also thought that part of that would be the vertical, uh, excuse me, the, if you will, the horizontal passing in with the bubbles and screens, taking what they could, you know, putting our, our uh, ball and our athletes' uh, space, hands in space. And I thought it's one of those things we had to do based off what they were giving us. It's, you know, teams that had watched us in the past, we're not a big bubble screen team. And, but I thought that was something that we wanted to do. Plus, there's a lot of unknowns. Uh, they jumped into a defense. That, like I told you guys, I even studied Liberty film 2018, 2019 from where the defense corner had been before. Their D-line coach is at Western Kentucky. So you're just trying to study a bunch of different things that you game plan. Um, if the vertical shots are there, we'll take them at any time. But uh, it didn't seem to present itself as well. And I think it worked okay in our favor. How much did it hurt you to lose the turnover battle? Uh, it sick to my stomach. I mean, it, the, the turnovers are everything in college football. And we, uh, you know, even talking to Willow pregame, right? Like the keys to victory are to own the football and that will never change. And we did a poor job and it's very, very disappointing, obviously, especially when you're turning it into points for them. Um, our defense did a fantastic job in essence shutting them out. And we, we gave them two scores based off of turnovers. It, it, it makes you sick to your stomach. It's unacceptable. Um, it's gonna be a long season if we continue to do things of that manner. So we've got to find a way to get it cleaned. Yeah, no, look, I, I thought the passion and the energy were there. And I, I don't ever doubt that with this. Um, but there was things to be cleaned up. And, you know, after the game, I think you get some of those, and I hate to use the term game one, but, like, there's some of those fundamentals weren't there. Maybe a guy taking a step instead of taking a six-inch vertical step took a 12-inch flat step, and, and maybe that made a difference in a missed block. You talked about um, some of the guys just not exactly doing what they're capable of, what they showed. You know, you get a 1,000 reps. Of doing something over and over an individual and then you, you expect it the thousandth first rep to show up on game day and sometimes it doesn't but i think when you can go back and watch and say hey here's where it's not showing up the young men have an understanding as well and, and even when we met with him yesterday it was a coach me coach mentality hey what where are we here and, and you know maybe it was a guy maybe jeff canton wasn't on the series but hey listen we're talking to this individual make sure you're getting this coaching point um, i thought the communication from the guys uh, was fantastic all night on the field amongst themselves. That first game, you always wonder how are they going to communicate. Um, and, and that offense, defense, and special teams was great. And then when they came to the sideline, having an understanding and be able to explain back to the coach, hey, here's what I saw, here's what we thought about. I think that's part of also having a, a little bit more of a mature team. Along the coach, line, uh, in the past, this team has not been great on the road. And, you know, I know each season's new. So what can you do different to be dominant early this season to set the term, tone going forward? Yeah, well, we got to go out there, and it's going to be being able to handle our business. And I think that's teams that rent, went on the road don't shoot themselves in the foot. And, you know, going back earlier to Matt's question is we, we just we, – we have to go play clean football. That gives you a chance because if you, it, it, now that you're on the road, it's another disadvantage. So if you go out there and you have self-inflicted wounds, it, it's going to be a, a long game on Saturday, and it's going to be a long season for us. So go out there and, and start off the right way, um, find a way to get a lead. And like we always talked about, play four quarters football and then find a better way to finish. And, you know, two years ago, we went down to Jonesboro. We had a, a nice lead. Calvin Austin had a huge game. Brandon Thomas had a huge game. And they came storming back in the fourth quarter and it became a shootout. Well, it's closer than when either of us wanted. You look at last year, right, we had to come from behind to win. Um, but all road games are, are you know, you got to be focused. Uh, we will stay here in Memphis and then bus over the day of the game so we won't be staying in Jonesboro so that will help a little bit you know the familiarity with the team hotel and a little bit of a pregame routine um, 
but excited. It's going to be a great environment. And I also expect to see a lot of our fans there, which is going to be huge for us. After you looked at the film, Brian, uh, along the lines of blocking, how did your O-line grade out? They, they did okay. Um, you know, we, we, I'm always going to be really hard on that group. They did some good things. Uh, pleased with obviously the way we were able to run the ball and, and pass protect for the most part, but uh, still too many shots on the quarterback. I thought Seth took too many hits, unnecessary hits. Um, and then, you know, in the run game, there's things that could have been cleaned up for sure. So, you know, uh, it, it was certainly wasn't their best performance. They know they every single one of them to a T said, man, I got to be better. And that's what I appreciate about that group is they understand what it takes. Um, so it was, it was just an average performance by the offensive line. And they have higher expectations for themselves. And so do we also. Will that group stay as the starting uh, group? For now, yes. But they know that they're getting challenged every single day. And I can't wait to get out on the practice field tomorrow and uh, get after them a little bit. Yeah, you know, I think proximity is is a huge thing. You know, I'm one of those that, as I told you guys, every time I have the opportunity to come up here and speak in front of you guys, the history of our Memphis football program means the, a lot to me. You know, I'm not just I don't just look at it as just checking a box as a head coach here. I understand. I appreciate the history of our program and that rivalry, what it's meant to so many former players and and fans. And so I think, you know, the proximity of being able to go down there and especially having our fans be able to go, it, it's huge. Um, but we don't treat this game any different than you know, our last week or the next one. But uh, it's the next one. We're excited about it. And uh, it's important. But, uh, you know, we won't treat it any differently. But quite excited to get out there. And uh, we know the type of atmosphere it's going to be. They're going to they're gonna have a great crowd. Um, they got a beautiful stadium. And uh, it's an opportunity also, like I said, it's easy for our fans to get to. So expect to see a lot of them there as well. Okay, we've won. 42-point win. How much in your mind as a coach in terms of play calling and stuff do you say, like, I don't I don't want to put too much on film if I don't have to? Yeah, going back to kind of what uh, uh, Gaston's question, do, how much do we hide? I mean, we, we really didn't hide much. I mean, you got to be smart. You, you're going to put out there what you can, but there's so many unknowns. And so what we didn't want to go out first game is and show a thousand formations and us line up to things we didn't know, you know, no differently than defense that we were studying an offense that we really, you know, we were studying the offense corner from where he'd been at the previous stop. So, you know, I think part of that is just trying to figure out, okay, what can we go out and, and really function at a high um, capability? What can we do and go out there and, and get our guys lined up to more than anything? So we didn't hide a whole lot. Uh, what you see is what you get. I think it's going to be a, you know, it gives you a kind of an understanding. Now, obviously, if we're playing a triple option offense, it's going to look a little bit different from us defensively. If we're playing a, a team that's uh, spread them out offensively with a tempo, then we're going to be looking a little bit different defensively. So um, week by week, obviously based off the opponent. But I, I think we you know, put our cards out there on the table and, and went and played ball. Um, I don't think you know, every week we, it's our job to out scheme our opponent and come up with new game plans. Um, but I think at least it gave you kind of a taste of, hey, this is the 2023 Memphis football program in all three phases. Looking at the, the talent you have, how much of that do you think can, can not necessarily be a staple, but be a part of the offense in that way? It has to be, you know. And I think when we've looked at the successful offenses we've had over here uh, the last few years, uh, and even in my history here, the running backs have been heavily involved in all aspects, especially in the passing game. I think it gives you some mismatches, some different things you can do. Um, and then, like I said, you know, even the post-game press conferences, you don't ever want to have a running back, hey, this guy's just a first and second down guy, or this guy's just a third down guy. And be able to have some running backs that can, you know, handle their business and all, and all three downs is huge. And I think that they go, those guys all showed that they could do that Saturday night, and uh, we're going to need that moving forward. I know you have a Utah State team that really got embarrassed last week. How do you prepare your, your guys to face a team that may be coming out a bit more emotionally fired up yeah, we're, we're going to get everything they have. Uh, Coach Jones has done a fantastic job. He's won everywhere he's been. Um, and so we know we're going to get their best shot. Uh, like I said last week, it, it's the next game, so it's the most important. Um, look, they also played a very tough Oklahoma team uh, and Norman. So it'd be a battle for anybody that lined up against them. They're one of the best teams in the country. And so we understand that they're going to come back, and, and rightfully so. They've got a chip on their shoulder. Um, at Arkansas State, and they'll be pissed off, and they're going to want us everything we got. And it's going to be a heavyweight fight. Uh, we're looking forward to that, but we got to go handle our business. It starts with a great week of practice. When you look at their performance from last week, their so much to get better. Do you expect that they're going to clean up those teams, or are there still a lot of them? 
Yeah, there's a lot you can take. I mean, uh, you sit there and you see some of the things they do. You know, you watch. They, they you know, brought in a transfer quarterback from Colorado that's a veteran that's done some good things. Um, you know, Cross, the running back number two, he's actually a kid we recruited out of high school that originally went to a Power 5 school that's back. Um, they have a very, very experienced secondary. Um, so you sit there and you watch. They got two defensive ends, uh, you know, from Memphis that are starting for them. So some familiarity with them. And uh, we know that they're, they're going to be able to clean things up just like we've got to clean things up as well. They'll be prepared. Um, you take as much as you can from that game. Obviously, you study previous years and try to get different things. But, uh, you yeah, know, every year in college football, what's going to be so different is every year is a new team, right? I mean, people are going to be watching us from last year and try to get a feel, but we're a new team as well, not only from personnel, but some of the stuff we're doing schematically. So um, they'll get it cleaned up, uh, hopefully not too much. But uh, we, we know that they're going to, you yeah, know, that's why they, they get paid and that's why they practice as well, so they can go out there and, and give us their best shot as well. Did well, you come out of that game healthy? Uh, in the post-game press conference, uh, it seemed like he's really taken Sutton under his wing, and Sutton was saying that they're roommates and that he'll go into Blake's room and ask some questions about film and whatnot. When you've got a new guy coming in that not only, not only is producing for you on the field, but taking one of your younger, talented guys under his wing, I mean, how thrilled does that make you as a coach? Yeah, it's, it speaks well for the culture, and it speaks well for the young men. I even told you guys post-game, like, Anybody ever asks, you know, the coaches use the word, but you know, culture all the damn time. What's our culture? It's our players. It's our student athletes, right? Are they doing what they're supposed to when they're supposed to doing it? And, and Blake Watson's a perfect example. You're talking about a 23-year-old running back that is splitting a lot of time right now with a 19-year-old, but he is doing everything he can to teach him and show him the ropes. And it's not just about football to those two, right? They're they're building a bond, a relationship. Probably talking about life skills, talking about schoolwork, and all those things. Those are instrumental in, in both of their success in life. But man, it, it warms your heart to see you know Blake taking Sutton under his wings, and I I think you're going to see that throughout our program, guys that really care about each other, and uh, with the different faces that come in in college football, I talked about the camaraderie amongst this team. It's a close knit team, and that's hard to do because some of these guys have only been here you know almost a month, and some of these guys have been here five years. But uh, quite pleased with that, and hopefully that continues throughout the season. Ryan, did you come out of the game relatively healthy? I know Drake got banged up a little bit. You didn't play duck or skates. Where do you stand? Yeah, I, I think we came out we'll, we'll, to be determined on Kobe Drake, um, and then you know, skates and Ducker day to day. Uh, that's you know, we'll know more as the season with this being an off day. Uh, hopefully, I'll have more answers as, as the week rolls on. But uh, other than that, felt like we came out relatively healthy. Um, you know, we were limited on defensive snaps. A lot of those guys, I think the most snaps any one of our defense players played was maybe 32 or 33 plays. Um, so that's a positive. Hopefully, they're a little bit fresher, and then. Um, you know, offensively, I think we're okay. And then some of the special teams guys, you know, they got different mix. But I think from a health standpoint, we're where we need to be. But uh, obviously, this week will determine a lot. Who's your punt returner if, if Kobe can't go? Probably Demir Blankumsey. Uh He got the last two at the end of the game. That pick six was uh, the first opportunity for your veteran quarterback to kind of set the tone on the sideline when something like that happened. How did you feel Steph responded on the sideline after that? No, uh, he, he was the first one. I mean, he, you know, some of these, it's easy for, an 18 to 23 year old, uh, shoot much, a lot of people in society point the finger at somebody else. He sat there and said, shame on me, it's my fault, I'll get, it, I'll, I'll get us back. It went, in fact, after that, I don't know if you guys noticed, he actually sat amongst the wide receivers. I just, he, he knew it, it was, he's not gonna sit there. He can blame me, I'll take the blame, but other than that, I mean, he's not gonna blame anybody else. One thousand percent mistake that he could get fixed. The offensive line could have probably protected a little bit better on one of those things, but, um, it just shows part of his leadership and growth that we've talked about all off season, you know, where Seth stands and um, unacceptable and, and we can't allow it to happen. And he knew it and shoot, if anything, at least go make the darn tackle. But, uh, you know, it, it does show his growth and maturity because a lot of young quarterbacks go and pout and go hide and he owned it and said, hey, I got to be better. Speaking of newcomers, uh, Andres Bach is the name that we didn't kind of snuck up on us in the, in the two D. What did you think about his game? Is that kind of what you've seen throughout this entire fall camp that made you say this guy should yeah, you know, so you look at Jalen Allen's position, and Jalen Allen all averaged over 80 plays a game just at that stand-up outside uh, position that we call our buck. And, you know, we wanted to keep Jalen fresh in the fourth quarter, rush the quarterback and do those things. And Andres Fox was a young man that we were able to get in the portal. Um, to start off at Stanford, of all places, even though he's from the state of Alabama, and it will bring him back down in the south. And, uh, you know, Throughout camp, we were able to see some explosion, you know, and he's a guy that we didn't see all spring, so he really didn't know what you get. Good-looking young man. Um, 
but you were able to see some of the explosiveness, and I thought that was a guy that could go out and help us. So if you watch some of the game, he was going in a lot on third downs, you know, to help rush the quarterback. And obviously, you guys got to see he's got some capabilities and abilities to help us on defense up front. So uh, it's good when you can get a rotation. That, you know, I've kind of talked all offseason about having some depth, and that's one of the pieces to the puzzle we we're able to add. And excited, Andreas is here. Speaking of the two deep, I, I'm just curious on this. You said the team started quarterback that wasn't on their two deep. Is that against the code? No, look, it, things happen. Um, I, I talked to the head coach prior, you know, prior to the game, and I, look, it's part of it. Um, you know, they, they had three guys that they all thought were capable of it. Um, thank goodness it didn't affect us, even though I did not study uh, Simmons' film as much. I did know him because he was at East Carolina. He's a Jacksonville guy, so that was, I remember his high school film pretty vividly and what he was capable of doing. Um, but it, it, it was part of it, and look, I, I don't hold any grudges because of that. Uh, I'm sure we've made mistakes, you know, by oversight on my fault, by just saying, hey, that. I was also part of a coaching staff that uh, in the NFL, you're required to turn in your report. And we had Brett Favre listed as out. And for the first time in the history of injury reports, Brett Favre woke up the morning of a game. It was, we were playing Chicago Bears um, Sunday night football. He woke up that Sunday morning and said, I'm playing the game. We're like, Brett, you haven't practiced all week. We've listed you as out. We can't do that. And that was probably against Code. Sure enough, he ended up starting the game. So. Uh, I can't be pointing the finger when I, I've been part of one of those uh, debacles prior. When you look at the, the way the defense played, I don't know if you look at the stats, but you've got the number one defense in the country right now. Based on the yards allowed. Just, Can we keep that? That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, like, like it's kind of a weird quirk because the offense allows more points than the defense, right? But, but how happy are you with the way the defense played and they have them over 100 yards? In the game? Yeah, it, it doesn't matter the opponent. Anytime you have the ability to hold a, a team in college football this day and age with the way it, it goes with offenses, uh, under 100 yards is huge. And to get a shutout, you, you're right. I mean, our offense gave up more points than our defense. It's, uh, I don't want to say that too often, but I'm, I'm fine. If our defense can continue holding to zero points, we'll figure this thing out somehow or another. Um, but it, it's hard to do, and I'm, I'm pleased with their efforts. And I think, you know, you guys got to see a number of different faces go out there, and I think that's going to help us in the long run. Uh, but new week, new opponent. There's going to be new challenges, and uh, they know that just as well. And, and I walked into that team meeting, and I said, that wasn't good enough. And I'm sure the calm person said, Coach, come on. Man, they held them 91, po 91 yards and zero points. No, it wasn't. There's, I mean, you go back and watch the film, there's things to be fixed. And uh, that's what I appreciate about that group on that side of the ball. They're hungry. They said, absolutely. We're going to go out, and how, how can we continue to improve and get better and hopefully you know, stack some really good games? Away from your team, what's your take on what Colorado, with 80 new guys, going to the runner-up and beating them at their place? Yeah, you know, I've first and foremost, I, I mean this wholeheartedly, I've kind of put myself in this little shell and I don't know a whole lot what's going on out in the world. And that's the, the truth. I have heard and, and people have told me what happened. And I did see the final score. Um, look, it, it's, that's college football, and I, I know you guys are going to hear me say that throughout the season. Like, holy cow, that like there's things that are going to occur. They're going to be, that's the new norm, right? A team coming in with you know 82 new scholarship players and going in and beating TCU, right? A team that played for the national championship. Um, I think there's going to be surprises like that throughout the season. You know, you look at um, what Texas State was able to do, go to Baylor. You know, Baylor was a 11 win team two years ago and go down there and beat them. You know. Uh, Wyoming being Texas Tech. You know, I showed our team, I, I'm probably the only one that watched the Norfolk State, Virginia State game and the ending of that because there were some great teachable moments in that. But uh, look, you know, I think that's the new norm with, you know, with what they're doing. Obviously, they're making some noise on a national level. Obviously, I want to also uh, congratulate Coach Norvell and his staff on the big win. I got to see the score. Didn't get to watch any of it. I was watching Arkansas State film, but on their big win last night uh, as well. If you had, and obviously you have a big part of schedule and if you could each year open and no disrespect to the but open with that type of an opponent as opposed to an Ole Miss or a Mississippi State would you like to have that first game where you can iron out some things before you play a big time opponent maybe in that second game or does it just doesn't matter to you? you know I, I've not thought about that you know someone had, had brought that my, to my attention uh, prior and saying is it good to have one of those that you, you get a chance to get a feel for what you're at and um, Look, I, I love playing the, the best of the best, and whenever they, they schedule it, they schedule it. You know, I do have some say in the, the scheduling, but not as much as you want. You know, I mean, it's uh, a lot of it's with 
conference realignment and different things going different places. But uh, it doesn't matter because, right, like if we're going to get a shot at, um, you know, Ole Miss as a season opener, it's going to be their opener too. And so they're going to have some things they got to wrinkle. I think every team sits there and says, okay, it's the very, you know, unless you're playing a team that just played in week zero and then they got an extra week to prepare, you don't want that. Um, so I think, you know, anytime you have that uh, the opportunity to play the first game, there's going to be some mistakes that are made. Um, and really the opponent should never matter. So I, I don't, honestly, I don't have a, a say or, or favor one way or the other. Do you buy you make your biggest improvement between week one and two? Oh, I think that's where you can, you know, I think being able to, back to Jonah's question, be able to see that stuff on film is huge for us because we, we can show it at practice. We can talk about an individual. I can talk about Tom Blue in the mouth, but then I can say, okay, here it is actually going against somebody else, not just lining up against your teammate for 30 straight days. And I think that's when they can sit there and put it together and understand, hey, this is why we do the way we do it. This is why we ask of those things. This is why we're demanding that. And um, I, do th- I, I, I certainly hope we see improvements every single week. Uh, I do think there's a big jump between week one and week two, and hopefully uh, for the Tigers and not the Red Wolves. Seth Morgan was named conference player of the week, uh, freshman player of the week. Is that competition? I assume he's the guy right here that's been under a How happy are you with just what you've seen from him since he's been here and obviously? Yeah, pleased with Seth, obviously. Right? With field goal kickers, we only want to talk about their makes, and uh, you know, obviously he, he's done a nice job with the extra points and then the field goals. And it starts with the snap, the hold, and the kick. and. Um, but yeah, glad that he's here and obviously pleased with that. And then we got to see Tristan Vandenberg on the kickoffs and some of his strong legs. Um, I think he was, I don't know what the number of touchbacks was, but a, a good number of touchbacks. And he's capable of hitting longer ones as well. Um, but yeah, Seth's our, our field goal and extra point kicker for the most part. And uh, Tristan uh, obviously did a fantastic job on kickoffs as well. One of the cool stories um, on the team this year, I think, is Vandarius Coffee. Um, when he initially came in as a freshman, He's on the defensive side, playing safety. He's been kind of moved around, dealing with injuries. All of a sudden, this year, he comes back his junior year and he's back on the, as a safety with the defense. Four tackles, uh, sack in the game. What are your thoughts on just – are you proud of him and what he did and just his story, I guess? Yeah, so, you know, and Darius Coffey, I, I mean, I, I talked about him for a couple hours right now. Uh, you know, young man I recruited. Um, you know, he, he was actually a high school quarterback. Originally committed to Ole Miss. Okay, as a high school quarterback, uh, recruited him and able to get him here. And then it came down between us and Duke on signing day. And there's some controversy there because at one point there was a couple of letters of intent signed and uh, all that stuff. And uh, he's got a wonderful family. His, his father's in the military and a lot of respect for him, a high ranking officer. And uh, all that being said, when and Darius came here, you know, he said, hey, I, I want to play in the defense, I think. And, and we actually started him off as a corner, all right? And, uh, you know, he did some really good things and said, hey, you're going to play quarterback to corner. It's a, it's a growing experience. It's going to take some time. And um, if anybody remembers, he actually went in the – before the portal even existed, I think, um, a few years ago, he actually went in the portal for about four hours. And the only way I found out was an email. And then <laughs> two hours after that email came out, him and I were sitting down face-to-face, and he just said, Coach, I want the opportunity to play running back. I, I didn't know how to tell you. And, that, that I said, man, I got to work on our relationship. And he was a running back for us, dealt with some injuries, uh, played some, you know, and then even the, the spring two years ago, you guys were like, man, this is the next great running back. And uh, then this past off season, we had to sit down and say, all right, it's time for you to figure this thing out. What do you want to do? And for us, and you know, being able to play him at that kind of that safety star position, um, he's smart, he's tough. He's, we've seen him do some stuff on special teams, but, you know, kind of come full circle now and Darius has grown into his role. I um, have high expectations for him, but very, very happy because he's a great young man, uh, intelligent, works hard. Anybody that's ever been around him, he's just a joy to be around. And obviously, then when you see a guy like that, then have success on the field, it really makes you happy. This isn't a new thing for Memphis. I mean, you look at Dylan Parham and Bunker. So as a coaching staff, how are you guys able to, to kind of figure out, well, this guy, you know, just move those pieces around the way you guys do? You know, Frank, it, it's interesting because I go back to this, uh, and, and Dylan Parham's a great, let's use him as a perfect example, all right? Dylan Parham came here as a 243-pound tight end, okay? After a month, we moved to the defense line. My thought process is, and Dylan Parham's a mature, smart young man, if that had happened this day and age, he probably would have said, hey, I'm going somewhere else to play tight end. 
probably would have transferred from the university. Then at defensive line, okay, if it didn't work out there, and the defensive line coach after four months says, I don't think he played defensive line for us, and then an O-line coach comes and says, you got to come play O-line, then for sure you may have lost that young man because who the hell wants to play offensive line, right, especially at 260 pounds at the time. It's not like it's a glorious position. No offense to offensive linemen. I love them. But, uh, you know, so the, being able to stick with it even before the portal days allowed that guy to grow in his position no different than in Darius Coffee. And so um, – I don't want to backtrack on that question, but like, I don't know how often we're going to continue to get guys moved around, right? You know, um, there's a, a player that's no longer with us that came here as a walk-on quarterback, 214-pound quarterback, and you know, there was an all-conference tight end, right? We've had some all-conference tight ends that moved to tackles and playing in the NFL at, at various spots in college football. So, all that being said, credit to the coaches; they're the ones, not me, that do a nice job of developing guys and putting them in the right spots. Um, but that's going to be harder and harder to do, you know, because I think as soon as somebody says, hey, go play this position because – and generally what happens is, you know, you start further away from the ball and they move you closer, you know, and I always say it's like the least athletic you are. Hey, we're going to move you closer, closer to the ball. And, um, it, you know, it's one of those deals. But uh, credit to, the, you know, all the, the coaches before me and everybody else around that's done a nice job developing those guys. But to that, even with the transfer portal in the mix, can you kind of lean on your track record like, hey, like – some of these, some of these position groups, it worked out for a lot of these guys. We, we can try. Maybe I can point to Frank's great article about hey, the, <laughs> the transition, how it's worked. But it's getting harder and harder. But yes, we we have to had that discussion, um, and, and, so, and shown guys, hey, this can benefit you if you come do this. Right, this can uh, playing this position will be able to move it around. Uh, easier said than done. But yes, we certainly have had a track record here at the university.